Is this new iPhone update dynamic enough for you? Here's some information that you might want to know before you lay down your hard-earned cash or your credit card. Introducing the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Plus, the iPhone 14 Pro, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. All iPhone 14 models come with the Super Retina XDR display. They also include Face ID. All models are equipped for 5G cellular. This year for the United States models, there's no SIM tray. They will use eSIMs instead of SIM chips. According to Apple, these models can store 8 or more eSIMs with 2 active at a time. All models include Wi-Fi 6, not 6E as expected. Perhaps the biggest feature that they added this year to the iPhone that people have really been clamoring for is a custom lock screen. While this type of feature isn't new to cell phones, it is new to the iPhone. We've already seen in iOS 16 that they've moved the notifications on the lock screen, but they've also added widgets, another feature people have been clamoring for. There are specific limitations to the number of widgets that you can have, though. Another interesting feature about these lock screens is you can create several of them and then flip between them to the one that fits what you're doing at the time. The combination of photos, widgets, and fonts for these lock screens seem to be endless. Some people are even creating wallpaper, especially for the lock screen and for the iOS 16. I've seen reports of people that have spent hours playing with them. These custom lock screens will work on all models that iOS 16 will work on. While these lock screens are actually part of iOS 16, they'll especially be important when we get to the iPhone 14 Pro models. In my opinion, one of the best improvements of the iPhone 14 lineup is the front-facing selfie camera. It's a true depth camera with a wider aperture that allows for better low-light performance for photos and video. For you camera geeks, the aperture is f1.9. This new camera also allows for autofocus on the front selfie camera for the first time in an iPhone, which is outstanding. This new selfie camera is going to be a feature that a lot of people are going to enjoy over the years. The added depth and autofocus will help a lot when you have more than one person in a selfie. So this new selfie camera is on all models of the iPhone 14. Speaking of all models, all models will have larger sensors and faster apertures, more advanced lenses, intelligent software, and Apple Silicon to drive them, which includes something new that Apple is calling the Photonic Engine. In previous iPhones, Apple used Deep Fusion to process photos. It was a huge improvement in computational photography, which combines multiple frames into one photo. Now they are taking things one step farther. They are applying it earlier in the process on uncompressed images, which retains much more information and detail than before. There are also some outstanding video features on all the models this year, including a special new one that Apple is calling Video Action Mode. This new feature is very similar to what you see on GoPro cameras. Action Mode uses special techniques to stabilize video taken from the middle of the action. The process utilizes the full sensor with more overscan and advanced roll correction. Simply toggle it on for smooth video without a gimbal. It also supports Dolby Vision HDR. Also coming to the iPhone 14 line is crash detection. This is an excellent new feature that Apple has introduced. Apple incorporates a motion sensor, a high dynamic range gyroscope, GPS, a barometer, microphone, all along with advanced motion algorithms that all work together to detect a car crash. Obviously, crash detection is something that all of us would not like to test for ourselves, but it is an excellent feature. It reminds me of OnStar that used to be in cars in the past. It's another one of those features that Apple is including to help save lives.
Another emergency service coming to all iPhone 14 models is Emergency SOS via satellite. The iPhone 14 models have been equipped with a new Qualcomm X65 broadband chip. This chip allows the phone to communicate with satellites. Apple and Globalstar have long been rumored to be developing a way for iPhones to communicate directly with the Globalstar satellite network. They are planning to offer this service in the United States and Canada this coming November. This will be the procedure users will follow. When out of contact of cell service, the choice for SOS via satellite appears at the bottom of the screen. Once that's selected, a second screen appears asking if you want to report an emergency. With that selected, the iPhone shows a screen telling the user where to point the phone to connect with a satellite. Once contact is made, choices appear to assist in reporting the emergency via special text messages. Those special text messages go to an emergency call center where your message is relayed to the proper dispatch center that will send the appropriate help to your location. As mentioned, this new satellite communication is available because of a new Qualcomm X65 chip and a larger cell antenna. This combination provides the capability for satellite SOS. According to Max Tech, this combination has resulted in faster speeds for both 5G and LTE. One of the biggest controversies about the iPhone 14 lineup is that the non-pro models still have a refresh rate of 60 hertz. I know this will be a big disappointment, especially those of you that like gaming on the iPhone. While the iPhone 14 models do boast of new cameras, they're actually the same cameras that were on the iPhone 13 Pro models last year. And they still don't have a telephoto zoom. The A15 Bionic is the same chip that was in the iPhone 13 Pro. Apple decided not to upgrade the chip in the standard models of the iPhone 14 this year. Here's the iPhone 14 lineup. And these are the main features of these iPhones. And now to switch from the regular iPhone 14 models to the 14 Pro and Pro Max. And we'll start off with one of the best features of the iPhone Pro models is the ProMotion technology with a refresh rate between 1 and 120 hertz. Going down to a refresh rate as low as 1 hertz is new to the iPhone and will be important as we discuss later. The iPhone 14 Pro models introduce a new chip, the A16 Bionic. This new chip is the first we understand is running on a 4 nanometer process. According to Apple, it's the fastest processor ever in a smartphone. Here's one of Apple's typical graphs where they compare it to the A13 Bionic and the nearest competitor. The A16 Bionic has a 6-core CPU with two high-performance cores and four high-efficiency cores. It also includes a neural engine, which Apple claims can perform 17 trillion operations per second. Also included is a 5-core GPU. The cameras on the Pro models include a 12 megapixel 2x telephoto, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 48 megapixel main camera, plus a LiDAR sensor. This is a considerable bump up from the 13s. The 48 megapixel sensor deserves most of the attention. While other cell phones have had high megapixel cameras in the past, this is a first for an iPhone. This new sensor groups four pixels into one large quad pixel, collecting four times the light for improving light capture. This produces a 2x improvement in low light photos. Apple is claiming low light improvement on all the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro models. 
Previously on the iPhone 13 Pro, one of the biggest flaws with the telephoto lens was it only had 3x zoom for things like portrait mode. The iPhone 14 Pro range is bringing back the 2x optical zoom to the telephoto lens, which gives you more options when it comes to zooming and framing your images, including portraits. So with the iPhone 14 Pro, you now have 0.5x ultra-wide, 1x main, 2x telephoto, and 3x telephoto zoom range. Apple says that the new telephoto lens will use the middle 12 megapixels of the quad pixel sensor to get full resolution images and 4K video, all without the need for inferior digital zoom. This is a good example of the improvement in the cameras in the iPhone 14 Pros. For the iPhone 14 Pro, Apple went a totally different direction than we thought. We all thought that the eye and iPhone was going to become the eye hole, which it isn't. It's now one long dynamic island. Yes, folks, that's what Apple decided to call it. But it's a wonderful, amazing piece of work. They've done a lot of different animations here that make this dynamic island really helpful and useful to the Apple user. It shows you all different kinds of things that you can do here in this little clip, making the dynamic island one of the slickest features that's ever come along in a cell phone in a long time. While Apple has already worked on this dynamic island using all of their different apps, they've also left it open to developers, and developers will be able to include the dynamic island in their app and use all of these different kinds of animations that Apple has built into this amazing new feature. It's going to be interesting to see what all the developers come up with in the future. I can't wait to see what they do. In order to create this dynamic island, Apple had to move all the sensors and cameras that were formerly in the notch and move them down a little bit. They also had to rearrange them and the proximity sensor actually goes under the screen. That rearrangement did allow for the pill and the hole punch that we saw in the prototypes, but the dynamic island actually covers it all up. Something that Apple did add this year that people really wanted was an always on display on the lock screen. Here's some good examples of what lock screens can look like. And just like the always on display on my Apple Watch, the screen dims. This is possible because the display rate goes down to one hertz. If you put your iPhone in your pocket, or even if you walk out of the room while you're wearing your Apple Watch, the display will actually go off. This feature with the watch was just noticed this week by some people who are working with their iPhones. Sort of the opposite to that is the fact that the iPhone Pros can go up to 2,000 nits outdoors. This is twice as bright as they've been before. So here are the iPhone 14 Pro models. They come in regular size and the max size. So here are the main features of the iPhone 14 Pro models. There sure is a good advancement over the 13s in these. It's sort of the opposite of the advancement of the regular 14 models when compared to the iPhone 13. So in review, here are all the models of the iPhone 14. The iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Plus, the iPhone 14 Pro and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, with prices starting at $799, $899, $999, and 1099. Of course, here in the United States, where necessary, we also have to add sales tax to those prices. So what have you decided? If you're getting a new iPhone, let me know what color and model. And if you're keeping your old iPhone, what model do you have? You can click on the video on my right to watch that, or you can click on the photo to subscribe to the channel. I've had a lot of fun producing this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up down below. And thank you all very much for watching.